Welcome. I'm Dave Nodemon. Today I will be showcasing my one megavolt Tesla coil. The Tesla coil is a cool but not very useful technology. It's a resonant transformer designed by Nikola Tesla about 100 years ago. 120 volt 60 Hz city power is converted using a transformer to somewhere in the order of several thousand volts. Using a high voltage capacitor or capacitors will charge until the point that the charge in the capacitors has sufficient voltage to arc across the spark gap. The distance the gap is apart determines the minimum voltage necessary. This causes a quickly changing current to induct into the secondary coil, which itself is a transformer. The result is a high frequency, high voltage on the secondary coil. Using a top load will allow the charge to accumulate there. If you want the arcs to be more controlled, the secondary coil windings ends can be brought together to make a much larger spark gap. The actual construction behind the spark gap test the coil is surprisingly easy and it only requires a couple of components. It will require a high voltage transformer, some high voltage rated capacitors, and a spark gap. And of course, in order to actually make a Tesla coil, you need a coil. Ugh, 10 hours of my life went into this. It has more than 3,000 windings. Before I actually construct the coil, you need to know what parts not to get for it. I wasted a lot of money getting the wrong capacitors, the wrong transformer, and well, I guess you can't go wrong with the spark gap. The first transformer I thought I would use to drive my circuit is this 12 kilovolt neon sign transformer. However, it has a drawback. Is it even on? Hmm, nothing. This thing must be broken. It can't be broken. I designed it. When there's a spike in current, it'll enter a state called ground fault interruption, which is basically a safety mode if it detects a spike in current. It'll turn off, and this won't work with the Tesla coil because there's too much variance. The correct transformer to use is just an iron core transformer that has no circuitry of any kind except for the windings. This will be perfect for running my Tesla coil. I would not recommend going under 3000 volts because under that you might have problems getting the arc to jump across the gap. A common way that people build Tesla coils is by using a capacitor bank which is essentially a bunch of really small capacitors hooked up in both series and parallel until they get the right voltage and capacitance rating. But these have a little Achilles heel. No matter which way I decided to put them together, I always found a similar problem. These leads on the ceramic capacitor are too close together, and I would get arcing across that. I mean, for crying out loud, I had insulation on this one. Insulation! And it still arced. <sighs> Even though these capacitors are baited for it, I just don't think they're gonna do. I need new capacitors, better capacitors that won't arc. That's why I decided to get these. They're called doorknob capacitors because, you know, they look like one of those uh, old style doorknobs that, whatever. What's useful about them is that they have terminals on either side that can be threaded into. Not only useful for mounting, but I don't think I have to worry about any more arcing across them since these capacitors are insulated. And, you know, that's about it. When I run a quick check for capacitance, I see that I'm getting 12.34 nanofarads, which is about what I expected from my calculation earlier. Now the last mandatory thing that I need is my primary coil. Now, I'm no carpenter, but this certainly is a fine platform that I built. The top plate is held in by removable pegs so I can get out the electronics below, and the coil can mount perfectly down the center. So here's a look inside my design now that I have everything bolted down to the bottom plate. Here's a couple of things to notice. 
each of my transformer wires, and it doesn't matter which, goes to both sides of my capacitor bank. One of these wires, and it doesn't matter which, will go through the spark gap on its way to the primary coil. This wire will lead up to the primary coil, and then coming out of the primary coil will be this wire, which leads not only back into the capacitors, but also back into the transformer. So this wire I have coming from the end of my secondary coil needs to short to ground somehow. The particular transformer that I have has this wire which shorts to ground. Or you can just go exactly where this green wire goes, which is to the iron core. Yes, if you attach anything to the iron core, it will be grounded if it's in this circuit. I think it's done. All it needs now is a sick paint job. Or, you know, to be tested first. Without further ado, may I overdramatically present my Tesla coil! Now, I'm not just going to plug this sucker into 120 volt city power. The first thing I'm going to do is run it through this momentary action foot switch so I can turn it off in case anything goes catastrophically wrong. Potential catastrophe scenarios include it bursting into flames, it exploding, it electrocuting me, it blowing a fuse, it getting security called on me, or it inciting a peasant revolt. Three, two, one. Well, I have noticed a couple of things my first run through. Unlike what you see in other YouTube videos, I didn't get arcs jumping off of my top load. I also noticed another problem. My primary and secondary coils seem to be a little close together. I occasionally get arcing between the two. So I'm going to need to figure out a way to insulate the primary coil from the secondary. While these gloves are supposed to insulate 12 kilovolts, and if I have two layers, one on each side... Well, I've done it again. I've managed to take something that's supposed to look cool and turn it into the most hideous thing imaginable. If you want to see anything half decent when you run a Tesla coil, you need to have the lights off. That goes doubly for the camera. You know what? I can actually see some sparks jumping off of my top load here. Although I bet they're so dim the camera's not even going to pick them up. It's a real shame. But they are, in fact, there. Now here's the answer to a question you've probably wanted to know. Can you touch a Tesla coil while it's running? The answer to that is, yes, you absolutely can. Let me demonstrate. So I have this metal poking rod, and I'm going to bring it near the top load. going anywhere else. It was just going directly into my hand and I'm absolutely fine. That's because even though this is high voltage, the current is extremely low. Let's take it up a notch. Here is my bare hand and I'm going to bring it near the top load. Okay, I underestimated that a little. Exactly do it justice, but this spark gap is pretty loud. 
You're ringing loud, in fact. So, I finished my test of foil before the deadline, and I gave it a nice lick black coat of paint. Before that paint even dried, I hauled it over to the competition to make off with wood lace. Well, now that I have a Tesla coil, I reckon it's time to have some fun. Do a few more things that you can do with a Tesla coil. If I just remove this rod. Like the smaller Tesla coil in my previous video, this one creates a strong electromagnetic field around it, which I can use to excite the gases inside a fluorescent bulb. The same is true with a incandescent bulb. You know one of the things I hate? It's those signs you see everywhere nowadays that say danger, high voltage. As if I don't know how much voltage I can take. For instance, there's at least 500,000 volts coming off of my top load. What those signs ought to say is danger, high voltage, at sufficient power. You can also see a lot of the arcing going on from this primary coil. Kinda cool. Although I'm losing a lot of electricity through here that I should be getting up at the top load. So, due to my haste in constructing this, I may have taken a few liberties as far as efficiency is concerned. Sometime in the future, I'll be taking this Tesla coil and actually tuning it to get it to operate at its peak efficiency. And then, I'll make a new video, and I will go through all the steps I did to tune in and optimize it. So, you can look forward to that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check the description for additional links and sources. And if you have any further questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. And also, if you want to see more of my videos, including the upcoming video of where I make my Tesla coil work far more efficiently, feel free to subscribe to my channel. It'll be... With the effort, I think.